The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what else do we have going on out here today? Well, we're down, just down a couple of points on the S&P cash off uh, 22 on the Dow. NASDAQ's up four, Russell's off uh, nine. And uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of it. Uh, gold's up uh, two bucks, silver up 13 cents. Uh, and, of course, uh, when we look at uh, Mr. Dollar, he's not going to make you holler today. $96.56 up almost 14 cents shy of a uh, nice little bounce here over the last couple of hours uh, and of course uh, off some lower numbers but not that lower maybe 20 cents uh, at 6 a.m. this morning uh, so a very kind of quiet day now tomorrow uh, markets gonna heat up a little bit uh, we're starting to see uh, the machinations of the government which acts fairly slow until it eventually gets up a lot of steam, kind of like a freight train. Um, takes a long time to get going, but uh, when they get something in their craw, uh, it happens. On a couple of fronts, actually. The biggest one I see is uh, tomorrow, uh, many, hopefully, many of the lies of the Silicon Valley um, crowd are going to be exposed with uh, Facebook and uh, Google and uh, Amazon and others uh, showing up uh, for a hearing about antitrust in the House. Uh, amazingly, there isn't a lot of things that the uh, Democrats and uh, Republicans believe on, but one of them is that, uh, guess what? These companies are too big. And I think it's a combination of uh, everybody being threatened by them uh, that has finally uh, gelled at least on this one issue with a common enemy. Uh, and I think that's about it. I think we're going to start seeing some action. Uh, generally, this is the uh, prerequisite uh, before uh, a referral is handed off from this committee or maybe even the entire House uh, to the government. Government? Government? Government. Uh, and, of course, they're only here to help. But, uh, you know, from a variety of things going on, it's not like there's a lot of good news. And I think, uh, of course, uh, uh, when Facebook was only fined $5 billion, uh, a lot of people were kind of jumping up and down in the end of last week. Uh, we're at uh, 204.79 on Facebook. Uh, but uh, I think... Uh, as much as a lot of people think that nothing ever will happen, I think that many of these companies are getting ready for a rude awakening. Uh, they've lied to uh, Congress, and uh, congressmen are probably fairly used to getting lied to, but eh, I think uh, just the heat and the pressure that these companies can exert uh, has uh, finally uh, congealed at least a consensus between the two parties that uh, there's one problem with uh, capitalism, and that is eventually, just like monopoly, everybody can end up with all the money. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. We see that uh, with Google trying to shut down any mention of the pedophile ring in the U.K. over the weekend, uh, bowing to pressure from uh, the U.K. government, which doesn't want it to know, doesn't want anybody to know. Uh, that they brought in uh, a ring of pedophiles, about 200 of them, and they've been trying to cover it up for uh, a year, a year and a half or two. Um, and, of course, well, we had a, that kind of here in the United States, too, with uh, Epstein. You never know how far these things are going to go. Uh, you don't have a right to free speech in uh, Britain, though, or the U.K., 
Uh, not like you have here in the U.S., which is much more problematic, but uh, eh, they found a way around that, and that is to uh, run everybody else out of business and then make sure that the only town square that you can get to has to go through somebody uh, that uh, at least is a little evil, if not totally evil. Uh, but we see Facebook and uh, Google and many of these others uh, that are threat to the de democracy uh, and the republic, or the republic democracy, or democratic republic, as it's called. Anyway, um, I, I kind of feel bad. This is kind of a great week and a sad week uh, to see just how bad uh, the Silicon Valley folk have uh, uh, drunk the Kool-Aid, uh, but uh, not unsurprising. Uh, throughout human history, total power has corrupted did totally, uh, and we move on from that. Uh, some of the other things going on, of course, uh, one of the big men of Silicon Valley saying that the CIA and the FBI should actually investigate Google. That's pretty interesting from a guy uh, who actually runs a company uh, that probably knows exactly what they're up to, uh, but uh, accusing uh, Google of actually uh, conspiring with uh, the Chinese Communist government. Uh, I just thought that they hated uh, the U.S. so bad that they would do that, not that they were actually uh, corrupted by the uh, Chinese Communists. Uh, of course, we wouldn't know a lot about this unless employees uh, finally had enough and wouldn't help um, much of the corralling of, uh, of individuals into uh, work camps, uh, which is a uh, euphemism for uh, sending them out to uh, slowly die and be tortured. Uh, but uh, Google did that. Uh, but uh, you just never know. Uh, but uh, again, total power corrupts totally. And uh, maybe we'll see at least a little bit of light into that tomorrow. But I think uh, we're kind of waiting for that a little bit. Uh, NASDAQ's still up. I think, again, a lot of people are just thinking there's literally nothing you can do to these companies that would actually hurt them. But uh, I think uh, just why the scale may be larger, uh, the reality is probably much more like Microsoft in 2001 when they lost 30% of their value in a single day. And I think that eventually is going to happen here. Uh, what else is going on? Of course, we had the first big prosecution of a Bitcoin scam uh, that uh, was, uh, I think, uh, adjudicated this morning. Couldn't really find the time and date. It was either on Friday uh, after the close or this morning, but the article was came out about 9.30 or 10 o'clock this morning. So uh, a lot of people doing bad things in technology, which is kind of my bailiwick but uh, not really affecting the market so much so far. But I think when we get into about 10 a.m. tomorrow, uh, there's going to be a lot of embarrassing questions for the FANG stocks. Uh, Microsoft, not so much. Probably not as much Amazon. Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all have a multitude of sins uh, that need airing, and maybe it'll happen tomorrow. We'll be back in a minute. We'll do a little history, and then we'll move on to charts. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk.
If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. As we get ready for the uh, 50th anniversary of the uh, moon landing, which I think is on Saturday, the 20th. Is that right? Am I wrong? Because I'm going somewhere on that day. Yes, thank, thanks. It's, it is Saturday. Uh, on the, it, We're going to try to do a space-themed week here. The unmanned, on this day in 1965, the unmanned spacecraft Mariner 4 passes over Mars at an altitude of 6,000 feet and sends back to Earth. The first close-up images of the red planet launched in November 1964. Mariner 4 carried a television camera and six other science instruments to study Mars and enter planetary space with a solar system. Reaching Mars on uh, July 14, uh, 1965, spacecraft began sending back television images of the planet just after midnight on July 15th. Pictures nearly 22 in all revealed a vast barren wasteland of craters and rust colored sand and uh yeah most people don't know now we know uh that it's covered in uh plur chlorides i think that's i'm pronouncing that right uh just imagine something horribly toxic everywhere on the planet on the surface uh that if it got in your eyes or in your nose or anywhere uh would instantly start eating away at your skin uh, everybody wants to go there. Uh, pretty horrible place, by the way. Uh, but uh, everybody's set on going to Mars. I think we probably need to go investigate it, check it out, poke it with a stick, make sure it's dead. Uh, but uh, a lot of people really unaware of the challenges that it would take to get to Mars. It may take us another 20 years of just going to the moon before we're ready to go to Mars. But on this day in uh, 1965, hey, we got our first uh, real peek at the red planet. Find out that uh, eh, there weren't a lot of canals. That was just a optical illusion uh, on the planet from uh, various uh, what they think are earthquakes. Uh, see what else is going on in the market here. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll bring up some charts. I think I got some emails already. 
uh, as we start taking a look at the market. Again, not a lot happening now. I think a lot of people kind of flying under the ra radar that they've had a few um, a few uh, hearings already and probably not expecting a lot more, but it does kind of look uh, as to the people that they've sent um, and you kind of send a dummy or a bunch of lawyers to represent you in these things. There's no way that you're going to let your client get in front uh, to have a bunch of politicians ask them some questions. Uh, but certainly uh, Facebook looking fairly weak if you just looked at the chart. Um, we've gone through the April 25th high, 198.48, that had 54 million shares with 15 million shares. The gap down that happened on basically these same issues in 2018 back uh, in July 26, almost a year ago, uh, down with 170 million shares as we go back and fill in that uh, area. Let's see. Take a quick look at uh, TWTR. Uh, and eh, kind of up, but again, not a whole lot of volume. Um, the market has tried to push that these things aren't a big deal. I think that they will be, and I think maybe we'll see if uh, not two, maybe four of these big companies face antitrust issues. And of course, uh, if history is any clue, uh, they will at least get somebody in there that is kind of a, uh, a master uh, to look at all the evil that they do and cut them out at the pass so they can't ask for forgiveness um, because uh, they were never allowed to do it. Uh, Twitter, of course, uh, Facebook, a lot of these companies, uh, YouTube uh, and Google, uh, working very hard to deny many freedom of speech. Uh, and, uh, of course, they, deci they decide what is uh, right and what is wrong for speech. But, uh, unfortunately, they don't even apply to themselves the same uh, – standards that they send to other folk. Anyway, uh, Google is back into a resistance level. Not a whole lot of juice today. Uh, we go back into the spike of the 22nd of May, 21 million shares. We've got about 8.3 million shares so far. So certainly we're not pushing a lot of these highs with volume. Uh, of course, Google probably the one in the biggest hot seat right now uh, because of uh, – uh, the uh, founder of Planeteer, 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 uh, the deep um, CIA uh, adjunct, Homeland Security adjunct company that we know little or nothing about, um, who's run by uh, or started by uh, Peter Thiel uh, calling last night for the CIA and FBI to investigate whether or not the Chinese have in, uh, infiltrated the highest levels of Google uh, because of the way that they acted, uh, and he used the word traitorous, which I think is probably fairly close of anything uh, that we heard from the employees that finally yelled and screamed until it went dead, at least we hope we, it's dead, uh, continue on. Uh, this is coming back up to the gap down on May 20th. That is, uh, what, 1.5? Uh, 1.5, yeah, 1.5 million shares on the downside. Today we only have about 500,000 shares. Got a bunch of little gaps up to about 1,200. Uh, Google has been acting. Was if we just took everything else away, Google has been acting uh, horribly uh, with all of its partners, which makes me think that they're uh, doing everything they can to squeeze every dime out of the company to make earnings look good. Uh, probably the weakest of all of them on a business model uh, that we've got. Uh, but uh, and not a whole lot. You're just back to basically what is resistance. Uh, if you are looking at a bigger ABC on the way down, uh, let's look at the expansion for this. Uh, an ABC uh, would be rather large. You got uh, 1296 back on April 29th. For the for A, B would be June 3rd at 1,027.03. That's uh, 4. Point, I'm going to call it 4.8 million shares. 
And if we just uh, look at anywhere in this area, maybe even just a little tad higher, 15, let's see, no, that's, uh, yeah, not 1500 $1,153 from July 9th. Uh, if you look at that, see a one-to-one -one takes you to $883. Um, so, you know, what is that? Do, 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 do. $270. A fairly wide projection if this ends up being true. There hasn't been a lot of energy since the last low, though. That's June 3rd out here at 1,027. At a minimum, I think you want to thank that that gets retested. We'll be back in a minute. Of least resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, Going to look at a lot of charts today if we get enough time. American International Group back into the August 1st high of 2018. Uh, that was at $56.04 with 10 million shares. Uh, Friday, we had 3 million shares. Today, we got uh, 1.6 million shares so far. So again, uh, breaking a lot of these highs, and we've got zero energy. Doesn't mean that you can't go up for a few more days, but generally means if we don't have volume, uh, that the market will probably break hard when it does. You never know when that last 
uh, blade of straw gets thrown on the camel and its back breaks. Uh, what else do we have out here? BBY, Best Buy, uh, coming up to its previous high. Not a lot of energy off the low. You got about 800,000 shares so far going into a 2.4 million share high back on April 24th. Um, but uh, the big thing is just a weak volume off the June 6th low so far. Uh, in what is typically a fairly light volume move, uh, it seems to be much more gear, uh, geared to what happens with Apple than anything else at the moment. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at, at path at tfnn.com. Or, of course, you can always put a message in the den if you've got one. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Builder Square. You have that. Uh, Builder's first source, excuse me. Um Watching these very closely, um, looks to me like you've got some distribution in BLDR, which is Builder's first source, uh, up in the May 8th high at 1694 with 3 million shares. You've gone sideways and never been able to get more than a million shares. Today, you only have 400,000 shares going back into that May 8th high. Uh, it certainly looks to me like uh, everybody that lends or borrows or uh, builds a house or a car um, is fairly weak at the moment. Bristol Myers uh, is out here squibbing into its own or old low. That was January 3rd, that's $44.30. With 80 million shares got into it on Friday, which is 23 million shares. It's up a little bit uh, and still in the trading range, but not a lot going on in that. Uh, does not Look to me like uh, unless you get a reversal in the next day or two that it's going to be able to hold that $44 level. B-U-R-L, uh, which is uh, Burlington uh, Stores, sells the coats and stuff. Uh, back into the 1.4 million share high of November 14th at 180.27. Got to 184.57 with a reversal today up at that high. Certainly looks like these are in some bigger trading ranges from about 144 back up to this 180. Well, I got to 184 today, but a pretty nice reversal and very little uh, juice. Generally, a good indication uh, that uh, the market makers were out there running the shorts and uh, gave up fairly quickly with that reversal signal. Um, to, to, to CARA, which is Cara Therapeutics, another biotech company. We'll go back and look at this uh, gap that's gone on for a while. Uh, back to what it looks like um, summer of 2017. Um, and you had like about 16 million shares of that gap down. Got into it uh, with about 2 million shares September 21st of 2018 uh, at 2430. Uh, today, trying to get through it again, 2 million shares um, on yeah, about 2 on Friday. Uh, you got uh, yeah, 2 million today, is that right? Yeah, 2 million today. Uh, but again, uh, going back up fairly hard and fairly decent resistance going back a ways. Uh, to, to do what else did we have? Uh, talked to uh, our friend Thursday about dust, and I said we wanted to wait uh, for if you wanted to get into the, uh, into the ETF of dust. You really wanted to wait until you got a close back above the three by three or nine day moving average. We haven't got that in either one of those so far, but you're fairly close. Um, you know, if it just continues this way, maybe you get your signal on Wednesday. Maybe you don't. But uh, if you wanted to go with the options, you got to go early. Uh, you got to wait on the ETF. That's the way the Risk reward works. Hasbro, look at that one. Uh, and in this one, we're back into the huge down day of the, what is that, uh, July 21st of 2017. So we're now two years on uh, into this. Uh, it came down with 1.3 million shares. As we look in the last few days, uh, we haven't been able to bust a million today, just 300,000 shares. So fairly light. HTH, which is Hilltop Holdings, been bouncing around in this uh, time frame for a while. 
Um, I was bringing up uh, it going back into lighter volume, uh, which was on April 26th, uh, $21.68 with 1.8 million shares. I uh, only could get uh, about 450, 460,000 shares into that July 10th high. You now have a close underneath the three by three. And again, this is where you get a lot of the damages when they finally crack and get back under that, that's where you have the huge acceleration. No acceleration of volume yet. Uh, we've talked about Illumina uh, being kind of a prototype for a markets on stocks going up with incredibly light volume. And as soon as you crack underneath uh, the uh, three by three or nine day moving average, uh, that's where most of the, disc, uh, the uh, real um, damage actually comes. Illumina on its earnings or pre-earnings has had a lot of people sell it off but of course blew up on the real big earnings uh, and back down to 300. We were talking about this on Friday, coming and testing the May 20th low at $300.35. Not quite there. We're about 17, 18 cents above that. Uh, you needed a million shares or less, probably 500,000 to think you had a low end. Uh, we've got uh, about 2.6 million shares. So there's going to be a lot of people on the wrong side of this for a long time. JDST, uh, which is the uh, gold miners bear index, uh, also same thing as dust, did not the close back above or in to say that we're ready for a, a fairly large retrace in gold, but eh, it could be there. LASR, uh, this one's on a longer one. Laser, um, one of the newer IPOs. I kind of liked it when it came out. Stock has not operated that well, uh, but uh, finally back to some areas where it's at least testing previous uh, volume with lighter volume. Uh, to, 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 what else? PCTY, which is uh, Paylocity. I've been watching this for a bit. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, just a light volume test of this 103.80 high from May 28th. Now you had uh, uh, 650,000 shares into it with 330,000 shares four days ago. Just 256,000 shares today as you break through uh, 100 bucks. We're going to break. We'll be back after this. We've got a lot more stocks to look at. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. A uh, question about why the Russell's down, and that is, of course, uh, a lot of happy talk about the uh, trade talks. And, of course, uh, that generally puts uh, an issue on the stocks that would do well without trade talks. Uh, so that's why it's down almost six-tenths of a percent, where we're kind of basically flat on the NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow. So not much happening in that right now, although... Some of the weaker stocks uh, that uh, were at least one of the weaker stocks. Well, is it one or two? Well, uh, I'm to the plus on a couple of the uh, individual stocks or ETFs that I'm short on, uh, but not that buying that much. Not going to retire on it, but at least on the right side of it. I'm thinking that a lot of these stocks are starting to uh, have their pullback, but we shall see what the rest of the week breaks uh, brings. And, of course, we've got options expiration on Friday. Friday, uh, but it does not look good. It continues to look like a weaker op, uh, options expiration week, but it's going to probably be some kind of surprise, whatever it is. I don't see what that would be. Maybe it's earnings come Thursday or Friday, but they're very nervous. Uh, oh, got to bring that up. Uh, Citibank or Citigroup did have their earnings today. Uh, they were up about a percent uh, pre-market, but not that much. Uh, the only way that they made their market was on a, a spinoff IPO that does not bode well for the future. Energy was off about 10% on the way off the uh, June 3rd low, so not that horrible. Uh, about the same energy at the top also. So uh, incredibly weak, no. Uh, bullish, the answer is no. Again, as we look uh, to the some of the most highly shorted uh, stocks, one of the good signals is when these stocks, uh, the uh, uh, powers that be run these stocks uh, that are highly shorted. Restorations hardware, I think 34%. Uh, did I check that? I got new data over the weekend, so let's take a quick look and see what we got. Uh, restoration hardware, eh, down a little bit, 27.5% from 31%. Uh, so you've got a fairly high level of uh, short selling uh, in this. And what you generally want in this or other highly shorted stocks is a huge run where they run everybody out that's short, all the weak hands, uh, and then you get a reversal that same day. We haven't gotten that yet. Uh, Tesla is another good example of a monstrously highly shorted stock. Um we got up to 249. We're very close out here in finding um, exactly where you wanted to pull the trigger. We've uh, at least covered a lot of the gaps. Uh, you do have one more at about 280. As I said before, though, it may take six months before this ready to take the next down leg. A lot of good news has come in for Tesla. I just think that uh, that good news probably fades over time. Another good ex chance to probably sell a company that's going to have massive uh, 
competition over the next few years. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, C's, S-E-S, uh, which is SeaWorld Entertainment. Uh, the old Blackfish is what it used to be, uh, absolutely through the September 14th high of 2018. That was $32.47 with uh, two and three quarters uh, million shares, 700,000 shares today. So again, not a, you, you want about three days uh, before these things uh, with no sign of a sign of strength. And then if they do hang up there, then you really have to look at taking a leap of faith and pulling the trigger on them. TJ Maxx is back up to its previous highs of November 2nd, 2018, uh, October 16, 2018, October 1st, 2018, triple top. And then it fell apart back down to $41 and 49 cents back to December 24th of 2018. You had a huge run back up, decent pullback. Energy is about the same on the way back up. What you don't have is any volume at these new highs. Uh, and you need about six or seven million shares. On Friday, you had 5.4 million shares. Today, you had about 2.6 million shares as you went through those highs. And it looks like you're going to close it back below. Uh, Vale, V-A-L-E, when we look at this. Um, back to uh, the 42 million share high on March 19th, $13.98. Uh, and that was 40, yeah, 42 million shares. Getting into it today with uh, 12.6 million shares. On Friday, it was 15.5 million shares. Uh, 19 million shares back, but basically you just don't have a lot of juice. You had 25 million shares on the 1st of July, uh, but that kind of reversed fairly quickly. So you don't have a lot going on here. You still have lawsuits out the yin yang. That's a technical term uh, that are going to continue on. Uh, Whirlpool, which I get occasional requests for just because I, if there is no trade deal, they'll probably do fairly well, uh, is holding up a uh, back up against fairly severe resistance on uh, February 25th at 146.80. Uh, a failure on April 23rd to get up to that same high, a couple bucks short on 3 million shares. Uh, you got uh, 852,000 on Friday, uh, just 556,000 shares. But again, this is a much longer term um, gap down that goes back to the 24th of July of 2018 on 12.5 million shares. Uh, you've tried to fill it a couple of times. You just never really had that big of juice. Again, if we get a big trade deal, uh, there may be a cutout for them, so you have to wonder about it. But uh, my guess is on a trade deal, uh, if there is no cutout on Whirlpool, it probably starts heading back down to the $100 level. Uh, if there is one, probably above the 165 level. The XLF, uh, again, anything um, buying, selling, uh, that uh, depends on loans, seems to have some kind of weak segments out here. The XLF testing its previous 68 million share high at uh, $28.14 uh, with uh, uh, 31 million shares on Friday. Today, just 20.7 million shares on a little bit of a reversal. Energy, just a little bit less uh, off this June 3rd low back up to the high compared to the May 1st high down to that June 3rd low. Uh, so is it horrible? The answer is no. That's why I don't see, I see a weak market, but I don't see a mar and a brittle market, but I don't see a market that looks to me like it just instantly will burst into flames and will be down 50%. I do think that there could be anywhere from a 5 to 10% pullback in the markets coming. I got a uh, email here to look at a couple of things, so we'll do that. Uh, two, 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 two. First one is AMAT and the SMHs. Are we getting our signal? Uh, no, but I think we're fairly close, as we've talked about. Uh, the next close below a three by three on the Applied Materials AMT. I think you instantly get a uh, very quick retest of 4250, and the question is whether or not that holds. You've got another nice gap at 36 bucks. Um, we'll look at the SMHs when we return after this short timeout to wrap up the first show of the week and get ready for Saturday, the 50th anniversary of The Man on the Moon.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I had a question uh, in the email asking me if I bought anything on Amazon Prime Day. Take a look at Amazon itself. I did buy a uh, unlocked phone for my girlfriend, but that's about it. Um, I didn't see anything else that looked like a great deal or anything that I actually needed or wanted. Uh, a lot of weird stuff, um, but uh, I don't think it's that big a deal. I think I probably could have, if I waited a couple weeks more, I probably would have found the same deal on the phone or maybe even a little bit better. I just needed it now. But uh, other than that, well, not a lot going on. Amazon, uh, not a lot of action on their Prime Day. Uh, but uh, what can you say? Uh, again, we've been looking for this to retest the September 4th high. That's $2,050. Uh, uh, 5.7 million shares. Uh, looking at uh, eh, 2.5 million shares a couple of days ago. Today, just 2 million shares. Again, uh, let's turn this down a little bit more so we kind of look at it. There is, uh, I mean, there was a pretty big drive down. We did test the November 20th, $1,420 low with 11 million shares. With 7 million shares, a couple of days later, it went below it. You were back into the trading range a couple of days after that. So actually a fairly decent move in Amazon back up to the highs, but uh, not a lot of juice here. But again, you're maybe two, 
two and a half months into the fall. And, uh, and I can't see a lot of reasons being short this one. Uh, this one has probably a much clearer uh, antitrust issue in that it's, uh, it's a vertical market. Uh, a lot of these laws were written uh, for white goods, and that was uh, washers and dryers uh, being sold by the stores that owned them, being repaired by the stores that owned them. Uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs>